Now, Curve Shapes is supported in Blender version 3.6 and above. Although in 3.6, we don't have the bevel increase uh, options. These are the limitations for the 3.6 version. So from version 4 and up, it's it's all good. And from version, from version 4.2, it comes as an extension as well. So you, you can just dra drag and drop the file that you download onto your Blender. Otherwise, you'll have to do the typical Blender installation right here. Open, go into Edit Preferences. If I just show you that, you would have to come here to Edit Preferences, go into your add-ons in, here in 4.2, it's extensions. You would press the Install button that shows up here, choose your extension, and then click the little checkbox. If you go to extensions and look for curve shape, you can see that we have a, a link and this will take you to the documentation. So if you prefer to check out the documentation by reading, you can come here and do what I'm just going to show you in the video. There are three ways you can add curve shapes to your scene. The first one is to go to the add menu, go into curve and you'll find the CS prefix curves here. And these are all curve shapes. So we can use that to add a curve shape. The second method is by drawing some annotations on your scene and then calling the pie menu and say annotations to curve. In this method, you also have this error that you can control. So you have less points. Less points mean simpler curves to work with. You can clear or not the annotations, go into edit mode in the curve and choose auto update. Another way you can create curve shapes is by adding a normal blender curve, like a, a bezier here. And either on the panel, you can press in Create Mesh. You can go to the pie menu and choose Create Mesh. By the way, if you don't like uh, the Control Shift plus the Tilter key to call the pie menu, we can come over here and go into Edit, Preferences, Key Map. And if you write down Curve Shapes, you can easily change that. I like to just use the tilter key. Curve shape objects are not just a single object. As you can see, we have a curve that controls the mesh and we have a mesh. So for example, if I duplicate this curve here, see that this curve is still controlling that mesh. So the connection is here. If I select the curve, it's saying I am controlling that mesh. So if I update this, this curve, the mesh is gonna snap to that curve. And if I come back to this curve, which is a different object, and if I update this one, the mesh is going to come back to this one. So I might want to change the connections here. So if I could choose this curve here and I say unlink this and create a new mesh, now they're actually separated. And if I edit one curve, the other one doesn't get affected and so on. You can edit your curve shapes by selecting the curve that controls the mesh and going into edit mode. Here you can change the position of your curves and press Update Mesh or you can use Auto Update Mesh and have the mesh update in real time. Another way you can edit curves is if with the curve selected or the mesh selected in this case, you can press this Edit Curve operator or go into the Pie menu and choose Edit Curve or even right-clicking and going into Edit Curves here in the Curve Shape me Context menu. What this does is it runs an operator that will automatically turn on or off the auto-update mesh. So if you have a lot of geometry, a lot of curves, maybe you do not want auto-update to be on because auto-update is going to be very slow, especially on lower-end computers. In that case, you can just uh, edit your curve as you see fit and use the pie menu, for example, to update mesh this way. And notice that in the place of edit curve, we have object mode so that you can go to edit curve and object mode really fast using the pie menu. Now our end panel here has four different panels and three of them can be accessed in different ways. One of them is by using our pie menu. So if I go into geometry, notice that it's the same menu it's the same panel that we have there, but in a floating manner. This is good if you're using your, using your pen tablet and you don't want to open up the end panel. 
Another way you can do it is by right clicking, go into curve shape and choose one of the panels. The geometry panel will change according to how many splines you have in the scene. For example, in this example, we have one spline in the scene. And it's a cyclic spline with four splide points. We can turn this into not cyclic by using Alt C. And now we got a non cyclic curve here. I'm going to turn off back face culling so that we don't have to keep changing the faces here. The first parameter in geometry will determine how many edges will be built uh, along the splines. So if I go all the way down, in this case, the minimum is three, so we get three edges for our shape. Snap will snap the points to the closest spline points. Now if I move my spline points, there's always going to be an edge snapping to them. If I start stretching my splines a lot, you can see that the geometry is not e very even anymore. So this is why we have even. By pressing even, we can see that the geometry gets distributed in a more even way. Finally, down here, it's the closing type for single splines. So we can have open, which is only going to draw edges here. We can have an angon. We can have tries, and we can have trifan. Now, trifan works better for closed shapes. So if I alt C this, you can see that this is better for these types of shapes. So depending on what you're doing, you, you'll figure out which algorithm you need. If we add another spline to our curve by doing a Shift D to duplicate this one, I'm going to add a new one, pressing Z so that I only move on the Z. And now you can see that one spline gets connected to the other spline in this fashion. So if I, and you can see that now we got something different, spline edges and connection edges. So the spline edges is how many edges are going to be created to follow the splines, as you can see there. And connection edges is how many edges we're going to have in the connection from one to spline to the other. When we have three or more splines, we get other options. We get, for example, the closed option. And here you can see that we are closing by connecting the first and the last spline together and creating a, a shape like this. This now gives us also the interpolation uh, box. And in the interpolation box, it's going to control the interpolation that happens between these curve connections. So if I have no interpolation, they're just going to connect in straight lines. And with interpolation, they're going to connect like that. We can stop the interpolation from happening in different axes by using this and getting different shapes. The regular is how the interpolation is going to be made, if it's an even fashion or uneven fashion. Now, this connect closest button will connect the edges that are built on the splines with the other splines in uh, by proximity instead of the default. The default is I created this edge first, and then I created this edge, and then I created this spline, sorry. So you can see that it goes from the first spline to the second and to the third. But if I turn on connect closest, it's just going to connect the closest spline that it finds in the scene inside the curve. This can be very handy, especially if you want, for example, to add new splines between splines with uh, the draw, for example. Let's say I want to add a new spline here and boom, that works. It wouldn't work any other way. When we have an active mesh on the scene and we use, for example, annotations and convert them to a curve, notice that if I go into my panel, my modifiers panel, I now have a target. I also have a target down here in the target section, but we'll get to that, uh, but we'll get to that later on. Now, by having a target, I have access to shrink, shrink wrap snap, and this is the first modifier that we have here. Now, these modifiers, they're basically normal modifiers, normal blender modifiers. They're here as an easy access to the type of modifiers that would work for the type of geometry that is cre being created. Right now, the extension only creates surface geometry, but in the future, we're going to have different types of geometry appropriated for different things. So if I turn on shrink, shrink wrap snap, you can see that 
the shape that I have there and I'll just add some more geometry so we can see it better. You can see that the shape is inside the monkey. If we now turn on shrink wrap snap, which is just a shrink wrap coming with above surface here in our surface point, and we can use offset to bring this out a little bit. Of course, this would look a lot better if we had more geometry in our Suzanne. So I'm just going to add here to the Suzanne, and I'm going to do this on purpose. Instead of a subdivision, I'm going to use a multi-res. I'll show you why in a minute. And now you can see that it's much better. Now with these modifiers at any point in this panel, if I unpress one of the modifiers, it will remove the modifier completely. Uh, pressing it again, any setting that was here is going to be reflected on the new added modifier. So let's say we want to do this on the other side. We can select mirror and instead of flipping, we leave that like that. And now our monkey has two little panels on their head. Now for these kind of shapes, Solidify can be a very useful uh, modifier to use here. So we can either push it out or push in like that. Uh, so if we want to do a Boolean join later on, we have some holes in there. So if I use the bevel, notice that this is just a bevel modifier, which is directly correlated to our bevel here. And we get the, that normal angle. It starts with angle. If I press weights here, notice that we have two things here, boundary and splines. Now, boundary is just going to be the boundary edges of the generated geometry. So if I use boundary here, notice that only these top edges and the bottom edges get beveled. Go back into edit curve and I actually want to draw a spline here. Okay, so that looks weird. That's that's because they are connecting one, two, three, and that is on top of the other geometry. So we use connect closest in this case, unflip the faces. And now I'm starting to have a lot of geometry here. I don't need all that geometry because we have the subdivide later on. So we want good clean topology. So let's do that. So if I now go into my modifier here again, my bevel modifier, and I choose to bevel the splines, you can see that wherever splines are, we're going to be able to bevel that. Okay, so we got splines here and splines there. You won't see that bevel unless we have solidify. And now everywhere there's a spline, we can bevel that. Now, this is going to be particularly useful later on in other versions because uh, we're planning to make the splines, make this spline bevel increases per spline basis. Right now we're just using this for all the splines that are inside the curve. Now when we get to subdivision, we also have boundary and splines here and we can use that to crease as well as bevel those, those uh, edges by the splines. If I actually open my mesh in edit mesh mode, you can see that if I select edges here, you can see that the edges are creased and beveled. They have those colors of creasing and bevel, which is basically the same thing as if I select one of these edges. You can see here bevel weight and crease. This is what gets affected by those controls. We'll get back to the modifiers to look at the skin modifier in a moment. But for now, I wanted to show you the target. You can see that here we have these options. Join objects is not an option right now because our monkey has a multi-res modifier applied to it. If I remove my multi-res modifier from my monkey and I come back here, you can see that now I can join the objects. You can also join the objects going to your pie menu and choose join. So if I join that, we get just one object, just Suzanne. Our, our mesh gets all the modifiers applied to it. We can choose to keep the original mesh or keep the control curve. And that control curve is going to generate a new, altogether new mesh. So if I select it and I come here to curve shape or I just create a mesh, 
we get a new mesh here. If I click on this curve that we kept and I press create mesh, I get my mesh back with the same settings and with the same modifiers. Also with the same target. Now if I use Boolean or shrink wrap project, for example, if I use Boolean, shrink wrap project is going to be hidden and vice versa. So we can only use one of these methods. Uh, I'm going to start with Boolean first and let's just change our solidify so we can make the solidify go inside the monkey head like that and now I come back to my boolean let's do a difference and as you press difference it's going to give you different algorithms there after we're doing the boolean join here you can see that instead of join I got boolean join as an option and if we do that it's a boolean join let's now try and use our shrink wrap project to project details on your mesh so let's see what we what kind of result we get from projecting. Finally, let's look at the skin modifier. Let's apply a skin modifier here. And you can see wherever there are edges, there are going to be a cross here with the skin modifier, as you can see. So that means that if I add connection edges here, I'll get that result. And if I add more connections at edges here, I'll get that result. Now, to better understand the spline multiplier and mesh multiplier, I'm going to add some more geometry. But before I do that, I'm going to select both and just bring them down. So everything gets smaller here. And now I'm just going to have some connection edges here. Maybe not so many. And two over here. So this also gets affected by the radius of the start and the end of each spline. What do I mean by that is if I, for example, come here to one of these splines, go into item and change the radius, see that this gets affected. And let's just make this radius big. And you can always also come here to radius and use this tool instead. Of course, this also works down here. Let's go back to object mode, go back to our panels. And now if I change the spline multiplier, you can see what's, what's, what happens. The mesh multiplier, if I say you don't get affected, it doesn't really get affected by that close curve as much. Now for this version, at least for this version, only the start and the end of the splines can have influence over the skin modifier. If I subdivide this one, for example, this point here will have no influence at whatsoever. Let's use a single curve. Create a mesh here. I choose open here and go into skin. Now, if I add subdivision to this, notice how the subdivision is going to work. If I turn on optimal display, so you get a very nice all quad geometry for this. And of course, you can control this however you want using the radius and the control points as much as you need. Now for future versions, we're planning on having one point of the spline connect to the next, to the closest point of the other spline. And that way you can uh, create characters just like you do in mesh mode, but with curves. Finally, when you're done and you want to edit your mesh, you can select your mesh Go into the pie menu and choose to mesh. This will convert your curve shape to a mesh. All you get is a mesh. You can choose also to keep your mesh or keep your curve so that you can rebuild the mesh from the curve. And you can choose to apply or not apply the modifiers. As I was recording this video, I noticed that you wouldn't have access to bevel, crease and skin special parameters if you used your own modifiers. So I add them to the curve shape geometry. So even though this doesn't come in the documentation, it's here. So if you want to use your um, your own modifiers, you can you can use crease and uh, bevel by doing this. So for example, if I crease my splines to make this obvious, and I come here and deselect them, you can see that where there are splines, there are there are creased edges. I think that for this version I have covered everything that needed to be covered. If you have any more questions, you can check out the documentation. I'll leave a link for it in the description below.
Thank you for watching and I hope that this extension will help you in your modeling ventures.